well, um, it's morning again and I gotta go back to the hospital. I was there till about 11.30 and got home at midnight. Um, they let me go home with my, my IV here. Uh, I guess if I continue to get um, infusions, I might have to be looking at a, at a pick line. Um, but I don't know yet. All I know is this morning I got up and I did my devotional and it was really powerful. God is feeding me. I mean, he is just feeding me his word and nuggets of truth. And he really is sustaining me with his food, his daily nourishment. And um, in this morning, the, the verse, and I, and I hopefully I, I, I did record it. I don't know if I'll post it. It was me in bed. Um, I was just crying because it was about um, gray hairs and growing old and, and, and how the Lord has it. And, um, and then my sister sent me some beautiful prayers and some other of my friends have been praying for me. I mean, if I didn't have my close friends and all of you out there, I don't know where I'd be. But um, I'm getting ready. Hang on here. Got to get a little spot for me. See, look, my it's pretty clean. And actually, I got the carrots. I don't know if the, I don't think these are the carrots that I ate, but it's the brand that I ate raw that may have given me the Eucernia uh, bacteria. It comes from raw food. And I had um, made a raw carrot cake. And even Mario ate some of the raw carrots and he got diarrhea. And no, I didn't. I got the bacteria going into different pockets in my body. But today, um, and I may look good, but I'm just so um, exhausted. And I feel the Lord is healing me. I'll know more today because we're going to get the echocardiogram. They're, uh, they're afraid uh, for pericarditis. I have some right hearted uh, uh, regurgitation that's came up on the scan so the doctors are concerned they don't want this 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 bacteria going into my heart uh, we know it's probably already in the liver um, and I'm gonna get an MRI I pray I pray I will get an MRI on Thursday they're gonna have an opening they're gonna have an opening um, and it seems like the wheels turn so slowly and a lot of it is because I'm not admitted and because um, I really didn't want to be admitted. I wanted to be home here with Mario. I didn't have anybody to care for him. And uh, it's a strain going back and forth, but as long as I'm able to do it for now, I'll keep doing it. And if I need to be admitted, I'll be admitted. Or if I need to be transferred to a bigger hospital, I will. But they did talk to, to Seattle, and they're like, keep on with the Cipro. And I know the Cipro can is just as bad sometimes as the disease or the infection but sometimes um, we have to do those things we have to we have to treat it um, we ha I mean we have to eradicate it some way or another and I'm doing all my natural stuff and and prayer is prayer is really what's going to heal me so I'm going in my IV Now. Well, they got another IV in, which is good. This one is working much better. And they said I probably, and I, I would imagine, need a pick line in the future if I continue not to be able to eat. And I tried. And I tried that much juice. And I started getting pain again. But I. I think I'm going to get my echo today, and I have an MRI on Thursday, and the nurse that listened to my heart today heard a murmur, which wasn't there before, so she says it sounds like the, the right atrium is regurgitating, and that, that's from the bacteria, but she says obviously my heart is very strong, but um, it's a little disconcerting. But they've got my banana bag. See, that's my banana bag. That's giving me minerals. And there's my Cipro. And I know some people have said that Cipro has destroyed their lives. Well, sometimes it's 
you know, it's a horse apiece. But I want to read you something that's really encouraging that just came from my, um, one of my friends. Hang on here. For a long time, I've been trying to explain this. And I talk to my friend a lot, Victoria, and she knows. I said, you always tell her, I always feel like I have one foot in this world and one foot in this spiritual realm. I said, the Holy Spirit works so powerfully in me. And it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain and get people to understand what I'm talking about. I just don't feel like... Um, it's hard to explain. Um, I feel like the Lord is working so powerfully in me and the Holy Spirit's always speaking to me and working. I mean, you can see from my testimony daily, right? And I just feel like I don't belong all the time, that I am walking in this spiritual place. Well, Dawn, my friend, um, texted me this morning, and that was an arrangement by God. I hadn't talked to her since the conference, and by God's grace, I found her her number, she sent me her number, she sent me a gift, and we reconnected. And by God's appointment, divine appointment, uh, she has been texting me throughout all this. And this morning she texted me something that I think Satan didn't want me to know. In fact, I know Satan didn't want me to know this. Because you gotta remember, this is this is a spiritual battle. This isn't so much about the, the, the bacteria in my body. This is war. And um, Dawn, through God's divine intervention, delivered me the message that I needed to hear. And I'm going to read it to you. Amen. I agree. Remember this life and the physical senses are only an illusion. They are only the points of contact to what we used to interpret this world. We are not part of this world, though. You're not flesh and blood with a spirit, but a spirit living in a physical body. The question, or should I say the warfare being posed to you right now is, are you going to believe your physical senses and what the world is telling you to believe through those six senses, or are you going to believe you are part of a higher kingdom where rules supersede what we called the natural, physical, or earthly realm. Are you going to believe your physical senses and what the world is telling you to believe through those six senses, or are you going to believe you are part of a higher kingdom where rules supersede what we called the natural, physical, or earthly realm? You weren't going to be healed. You are already healed. Your body just has to catch up with the truth. Tell Your spirit is strong and rising up. Your spirit doesn't get sick or weak unless, of course, you don't feed it. Job twenty-two twenty-eight. 28, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established in you. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of the mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. God's word promises that where he sends it, it won't come back to him without accomplishing what he sent it out to do. He sent it out to you 2,000 years ago. You are healed. No matter what your body is telling you, no matter how many medications you have to take, no matter what words doctors may be saying to you, they may all be true in the natural, but you belong to a higher kingdom. The warfare is in your mind. The enemy can't have you, so he's attacking you to keep you from believing all the things that Jesus accomplished for you on the cross. None only salvation for you, your soul, but healing for your body. 33 stripes 
for 33 major diseases. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. That means anything that steals your peace has already been taken care of and removed on the cross. Walk in it. Remember, sickness and disease is an enemy of what happened on the cross. Anything that's an enemy of the cross is the enemy of ours. You belong to God the Father in the captain of the army of the host of Jesus. You are ruled by the kingdom's laws and principles. Like a physical attack, this is an attack on your mind and thoughts and mediations of your mind. Whose report are you choosing to believe? Power by hour. Okay, that makes me feel better right there, even though I'm having a hot flash. I get these extreme hot flashes from the bacteria. See?